Hello and welcome to Rebels Radio latest interview. I'm joined by Joint Manager John Underwood. How are you, John? Good, thanks, John. Yeah, so reflecting back on the weekend, uh, how was Froome for you? What was the team selection about? Um, obviously, we didn't change much from uh, Dunstable. We don't have a, a huge uh, number of players to pick from at the minute, um, but uh, we always wanted to give Gurkhan a few uh, a few starts for the end of the season. Obviously, Jake's suspension has made that easier. Um, and yeah, we brought him in. He did very well when he came on against Dunstable, so we wanted to give him a start. So uh, yeah, Gurkhan came in on the right, and obviously the only other change was was we had Johnny Dyer on the bench. Mm. Um, bit of a favour, for, uh, really, for us because um, you know with with Scott Harris out, uh, we wanted another forward on the bench. Obviously, Johnny's still registered. He, he left on on good terms, and uh, it was good to have him back with us. And um, the game kind of started quite quietly, really. It was a little bit subdued. I was shocked because uh, you think Froome fighting for you know those vital points to try and get them safe at the bottom of the table. It just kind of started a little bit slowly for both teams. Yeah, it was a little bit of a, I guess, a non-event early on. Um, the, the, I mean, it was diff- the, the pitch was very difficult to play on. We we turned up, uh, and I actually said to Bakes, looking at it, it looked quite green. It looked, it looked, you know, it looked like they they tried to work on it. Um, and we walked on it, and it didn't look too bad. And then as soon as you got out into the middle, it it was really, you know, as a lot of the pitches are this time of year, very dry, very bobbly. You know, there were several occasions in the first half. I remember one when Ed, Ed Smith had it, had an easy ball to play Chris Henry in down the left, and the ball just would not sit down for him, and he couldn't get his pass away. And I think he ended up coming off his shin. Um, you know, and that does detract from the game. You know, both both ways, it, it makes it difficult to get any kind of free flowing football played. You know, any balls that are in the air, once they bounce, they bounce high. And it just makes it, you know, with a, a swirling wind as well, just, it wasn't, was never going to be a classic. And, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't a great game to watch, no. to be honest. It, was, it wasn't that spectacle. And, uh, no. Chances on goal were few and far between. Yeah, they were. Um, to be fair, I thought it was the first half went on. I thought we, um, I thought we certainly got on top. I thought we, we played it in, uh, in stages, played some good stuff. I thought the, the goal... As, as scrappy as it ended up being, was from a great move down the right, um, and and we opened them up. Dan Reed as yeah, well. we opened them up. Dan got in. I think he wanted to shoot, but again, the ball wouldn't sit for him, and he ended up um, unselfishly squaring it, and it, it kind of fell nicely for for Chris to to prod home. So, yeah, scrappy, scrappy in the way it ended up, but it did come from a very good move. So um, happy to be going in at half time. A goal to the good. Yeah, we felt we were worth. Worth our one 0 at half time. We were relatively pleased. You know, you know, it was important, difficult day for defenders, and important that we did the right things defensively. And I felt we did first half. And then Freen came out second half, and it must be fair to say they they had a bit of a go. Yeah, I mean to be honest, we we all heard the half times, and and Alzi were winning at, at Truro, and um, Banbury were we, were beating Histon. So, you know, they didn't need any more incentive than that to come out all guns blazing. Um, so we expected a reaction from them, um, and and they did. They improved second half. Uh, we just got a bit um, a bit penned in second half. We had a great chance with with Eddie, mm-hmm. uh, fantastic turn to beat his man, and then I think he just snatched it. I think he wanted to sort of blast it into the back of the net rather than just keep his composure. And I think if he puts that away, um, two goals would have been would have been enough for us to be honest. But. Uh, once they survived that, they kind of grew into yeah. the game, and they started to create a bit of pressure, didn't they? Really? Yeah, they did. They did, and we kind of sunk back a little bit, and they got themselves on top. And um, I've got to be honest, you know, when the goal went in, it was it was at a time when we could we could see it coming. We we were we were sat there, myself and Bakes, you know, looking at making a change just to try and um, break the, the flow of the game up, really. And then they got the goal. Yeah, there was uh, talking of injuries and, and the bench. At one point, you must have been potentially looking for another goalkeeper, as there was a bit of a nasty incident where, where Luke went uh, head over heels and, and landed pretty heavily. Yeah, it looked, looked a pretty horrible one. You know, that's one of those he could have, you know, done his shoulder or neck or broken an arm the way he fell. I mean, no, um, no blame on their players. Just one of those things. He went so high up in the air, and obviously the ground's very hard. Yeah, we feared the worst, and we were we were immediately. Who, who, who's going to get the gloves on? I'll be honest, not many people were putting their hands up, so um, we were going to have to make a decision on that one. But thankfully, Luke um, got got to his feet and was just a bit shaken and a bit bruised, but uh, nothing serious, which was um, obviously great news. And after the equaliser, obviously Froome continued to press and search for that winner. Uh, were you confident that you were going to hold out for a draw? Yeah, I think so. I think, to be fair, a draw was probably a fair result. I think we were the better side first half, they were the better side second half. Uh, we didn't create enough second half to you know really to get that second goal apart from Eddie's chance. So 
Yeah, I think I think reasonably fair result in the end. Was it a disappointing to uh, end your last home game of the season in that manner? Yeah, it was actually. I mean, I, we were looking to win the game. You know, we we went in off the back of a a great comeback, great win at Dunstable. We looked at our last three games, and and you know, as much as um, you know, we know there's no easy games in the league. We're playing three sides below us in the league. We we wanted to finish the season positively and. Um, we did want to finish with a, a good performance. I think if we could have replicated the first half in the second half and got ourselves a, a 2 0 win, even if it had been a bit scrappy, I think we would have been delighted with that. But um, yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't to be, which, which is a shame. Yeah, because there was a, a good number of fans. It was a nice day, the MyFC day. Lots of fans, decent weather. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, the pitch didn't help out. But No, I, th- I think people, anyone who was at the game I think could understand it. it. It wasn't easy to play kind of fast, free flowing football. Um, yeah, I'm sure there was a bit of disappointment that it kind of petered out a bit for us second half, and that's not what we wanted. But that's what happened, and um, you know we'll hope for hope for two positive performances in the away games now. Yeah, there's other results on Saturday. I mean, going to Banbury still has an impact on that relegation batter. Obviously, Froome got that point, but it still means that uh, Banbury, if they if they go and win their two games, and then we'll score some goals and claw some goals back on a uh, on on Froome, will uh, will will we'll potentially be in. Issues with Banbury. How do you see the challenge of Banbury tomorrow? A bit tough game. I mean, I think you've just told me that they're they're fifth in the form guy, which I hadn't realised. I knew knew they were on good form and had a couple of great wins at home recently. Um, and confidence is everything in, in any level of football. And um, they'll they'll be expecting to beat us tomorrow. I'm sure. You know, the the run they're on, they will expect to to turn us over. They'll have seen that we've had some indifferent form. Um, I'm sure they'll go in full of confidence, much more confident than they probably were a month or so ago. So yeah, we see it as a tough game, um, but we're, we're you know we're really um, desperate to finish well this season, and we'd like to finish with with two wins. But both games will be very difficult. Obviously, still suffering from suspensions in the squad. Is there any other players unavailable due to travel or work commitments? No, no, we'll have the same the same squad as Saturday. Uh, apart from um, we we won't have Johnny Dyer. Um, so we we may well have um, young Joe Grant who was on the bench at Dunstable. We're we're going to see if he's available. Uh, he's playing tonight for for Ascot against Binfield. So I know Bakes is going over there, and um, we'll see if we can have him as a as a fourth sub for tomorrow. But otherwise, the squad will be the same. And you say you hope for a, a good performance. What what does that look like to you in terms of what what areas would you like to see some improvement on from Saturday? Well, to be fair, I, th- I thought we defended reasonably well in the game. I thought you know disappointing how we conceded the goal. Um, from a set piece, um, but generally I thought we defended quite well. I know you know Sean was made man of the match, which we totally agreed with. We thought Sean had a, had a great game at right back. He defended well and joined in when he could going forward. Um, you know I thought we 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 coped with them pretty well. Um, so yeah, I guess in terms of pre- improvement, creating some more chances. I mean Chris Henry first half had a very good half. A, l- a lot of our good play came down the left uh, first half. You know Chris. On a few occasions, sort of skinned his full back and got crosses in the box. So, um, but we didn't really do enough of that second half on either side. So we'll be looking to you know, obviously create a little bit more for the front two. Um, and finally, these uh, these last couple of games are still absolutely key. There's a couple of games both tomorrow. Obviously, Slough versus uh, at Banbury. That's key for the relegation battle. You've also got Weymouth Pool at the top of the table. This Premier uh, season is going right to the wire. Yeah, it is. It's, it's very exciting at, at both ends. Um, very hard to call at the top. It's obviously going to go to that final game between uh, between Paul and Corby. I mean, Corby in far better form than Paul, but then it would just be like football for for Paul to go and turn them over and win the league. And and uh, you, you know, you never know. It's it it could go either way. Um, you know, there's some very good sides at the top of the league. It looks like probably Hungerford and and St Neots uh, in the playoffs. You know, Weymouth obviously still got a chance of getting in there, but. There'll be some good sides miss out on on the playoffs, and then obviously three of those four sides in the playoffs will, will stay down. So there, there's some very good sides that will remain in the league next season. It's going to be a um, whoever goes up through the playoffs will certainly have earned it. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. We look forward to the upcoming games. Uh, wish you the best of luck, and we'll speak to you later in the week. Cheers, John. Thank you.